Now coming to the another important question regarding this. A nine-year-old child came to the medical OPD with complaints of fever, painful swollen joints for last five days. The joint pain was statistically found to be migrating from one joint to another. The child had no such symptoms in the past. Okay. After that, uh, there is a history of sore throat three weeks ago and throat cell cultures was done. The culture report shows the growth of streptococcus pyogenes, which is a group A strepto. C-reactive protein found to be 4 mg per dl. ESR 80 mm in the first hour. The patient was sent for the further investigations to ascertain, ascertain the diagnosis of this particular thing. So, this particular clinical scenario, case scenario suggests what guys? There is a bacteria, there is migrating joint pain, okay, along with a fever, along with a painful swollen joints. So, this is characteristically seen in what? It is seen in acute rheumatic fever, okay. So, the provisional clinical diagnosis here is acute rheumatic fever. And uh, along with that, you know that uh, regarding the group A strepto, we go for certain titers that is termed as ASO, anti streptolysis, you know, titers more than 200 TOD units that is there. And uh, you definitely have to go for cardiac checkup and ECG to like uh, know about the other cardiac manifestations which can happen here. Okay. Like there is an increased PR interval and all that. So, basically, regarding the discussion part, first of all, we'll discuss up. That uh, how does we make the diagnosis of acute rheumatic fever according to a criteria termed as what? Modified Jones criteria. What was Dukes? Dukes for infective endocarditis. Jones is here. Okay. In this case, the migrating polyarthritis. This particular one is a major criteria. And the fever of 39 degree centigrade, it is there along with the elevated ESR that is around how much? 80 mm in the first hour. And the C-reactive protein. These all are what? These all are minor criteria. They were present with evidence of previous streptococcal infection that is also being written in the question. Fine. So, acute rheumatic fever is diagnosed if two major criteria, okay, two major criteria are there, one major or two minor criteria plus any evidence of past streptococcal infection. If this is there, then your diagnosis is made. That is two major criteria or one major and two minor. If this is there, then your diagnosis is made. What is the role of uh, these elevated ASO titers? They provide the support that yes, it might be acute rheumatic fever. And if they are also seen along with these, obviously your diagnosis is made that this is typically what acute rheumatic fever. Okay. So, uh, first of all, we will uh, discuss of what is this zones criteria. Obviously, uh, slide bit fast. The initial episodes of ARF is being diagnosed of with the two major okay, manifestations or one major plus two. Okay, so here you see 1 plus 2, that is 1 major, 2 minor or 2 major manifestations. This is a case of initial ARF. Then you have recurrent ARF, that is 2 major, 2 major manifestations or 1 major and 2 minor and even 3 minor. That is also is a diagnosis of what? Recurrent ARF. Fine. Then let us see what this major criteria is all about, which we are talking about now here. So, 2 major criteria, 1 plus 3, that is... 1 plus 2, that is 1 major, 2 minor. So, what it actually it is? So, basically, major criteria and minor criteria, they are divided up on the basis of what? Low risk population, moderate to high risk population. So, and uh, what about this uh, low risk and moderate to high risk? This is regarding this particular stuff here. Low risk populations, they are those in which acute rheumatic fever incidence is how much? Less than or equal to per 1 lakh school age children. This is a low risk. Okay. Or all age rheumatic heart disease prevalence is hardly how much? Less than or equal to 1 per 1000 population per year. If this is there in a particular area, that particular area is termed as what? Low risk population. Okay. And if it is more than this, then it is termed as what? High risk population. First thing to be remembered is this. Now coming to the major criteria first. So guys, for the major criteria, if you remember of a mnemonic, that is CARES. Then you are able to remember all these major criteria at one go. What is that? Carditis, arthritis, okay. Then R is what? Rheumatic chorea. R stands for rheumatic chorea. E stands for arrhythma marginatum. And S stands for subcutaneous nodules. You can remember all these major manifestations at one go by this mnemonic cares, okay. Clinical or subclinical carditis, that is regarding this particular one. These are the major criteria. They are same in mostly both. But if you can see here, this is polyarthritis only in the low risk, multiple joint inflammation if there, that is polyarthritis. But in the case of moderate to high risk population, which are having incidence more, 
in them even one single inflamed joint or polyarthritis of pain in the joints that is taken into account okay so this is the difference otherwise mostly the things are same in the major criteria for both low prevalent areas and high prevalent areas now coming to the minor criteria in the minor criteria in the low risk population you see this particular name that is polyarthralgia okay polyarthralgia comes in the minor criteria in the case of low risk population okay then fever fever how much more than equal to 38.5 degree centigrade regarding the inflammation esr more than 60 mm in first hour or crp more than equal to 3 mg per dl this is also there prolonged pr interval which you can find in the ecg and all that is also coming in the minor criteria what about the moderate to high risk population here even a single joint will also be considered as a minor criterion okay fever of more than equal to 38 degree centigrade means all the features which are less will be there where where the incidence is high so then suppose in a population the incidence is high so even few features will also diagnose of the thing so that is what is the logic so monoarthralgia fever esr more than this crp more than this prolonged pr interval is here also okay see the difference here it is 60 mm in the first hour here it is more than equal to 30 mm also is taken into account for the diagnosis of acute rheumatic fever crp is same okay so esr is a difference fever is a difference slight bit 0.5 monoarthralgia is also considered as a minor criteria okay so basically this is what is the logic of this zones criteria according to which we go for this acute rheumatic fever and what is the the role of the those asos and all they are supporting role okay they don't come in any criteria but they have a supporting role that a person of acute rheumatic fever will be having aso titers more than 200 tod units okay subclinical carditis because this word have come na subclinical carditis if you see this particular word have come na subclinical so what is the meaning of the subclinical carditis echocardiographic change that is echocardiographic change which suggest the valve inflammation that is termed as echocardiographic valvulitis so this is jones criteria duke's criteria definite question need to remember them okay 